welcome to the series we're doing on tarot and the 12 zodiac signs. Um, so if you've been keeping up with the series so far, uh, maybe you've seen some of the videos in between Aries and Scorpio, um, we are moving on to Sagittarius. So this is the last of the three fire signs. Um, it's very influential in that aspect in that it's, it's reaching a wider audience. Um, Sagittarius is known for its symbol being the archer. It's aiming high. And when we aim high, um, we can further see how things affect things on a global scale. The things that we're doing, fire signs are all about the self, um, the personal attributes that you have and the mark that you're personally making on the world. You combine that with the mutable energy which makes for expansiveness, it makes for um, change, and you add that to the arrow kind of symbol, and it like means a very far-reaching audience, and so Sagittarius signs are usually a lot more successful than Aries and Leo at um, kind of having a better fan base or um, putting their creativity out there in the world on a larger scale, um, whether it be, you know, a a Netflix special about their stand-up comedy it reaches a very wide audience. You know, how many people have Netflix by now? And um, something of that nature, you know, it's not so much about the personal Leo, like, coaching people. You know, maybe they would be um, your local gym. There would be a Leo at the top of it that's kind of, like, checking in with everybody. Maybe he's a personal trainer for a few people or she, he or she. Um, and doing something a little more on that scale, or maybe he's the football coach, or she is the, you know, whatever kind of sports related, um, where it's about competition, it's about fitness and strength, but there's also a team sense too. Um, and then you're talking about Aries. Aries is more so the individual performer. Um, this would be like the, maybe the sports player that would just be like in tennis or the fighter, like in a boxing ring. Um, I think that makes a little more sense for an Aries, like a boxer, something that's a lot more in your face, hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's very close contact. Um, you know, something that is, you know, not as, team oriented it's more about the individual um and we can see their ego a little more up close so they don't necessarily get lost in the crowd um but they're not also the head of like the class or the instructor because aries out of the three fire signs is going to be the least prone to being in a teaching or um a learning environment as opposed to leo and sagittarius sagittarius most of all because they represent university and higher learning so a really common profession to find older Sagittarius signs in is um, being a professor, um, you know, being an instructor of some kind. Um, you know, that may mean even like a teacher and earlier learning, but that's usually associated with Gemini signs. Um, Sagittarius is more so about reaching a wider audience, a more diverse audience, and we definitely get that when we move on to university or college with people coming from out of state or even internationally. So you get a really big melting pot. And so think of that being kind of what Sagittarius does. It reaches a lot of people. So it's not just um, the personal world around them. It's not just a few close friends like a Gemini would be. Um, Sagittarius has probably uh, a lot more friends, but nothing as close or personal um, as like some of the air signs would be, you know, and so fire seeks independence. Um, as much as they like to control things, or they seemingly do, um, they definitely do seek independence. And so if there's not room for them to really grow or really influence people, um, you could almost bet for sure that they're going to move on, whether that's a physical move, a job move, something like that. And so they need that kind of um, reignition, you know, every few years, Sagittarius even faster than that, mutable moves very, very quick. And I know this is a mouthful. I'm moving very fast and picking up that Sagittarius energy. I like can feel my voice like just going, going, going. So, um, and right before I sat down, I opened up some windows or tried to let some light in here. Um, I just ate, so I have a full belly, and um, I still have my shoes on, so I'm ready to go at a moment's notice. These are like all Sagittarius attributes. It's like being outside or being connected to 
the world a little more having the windows open you know they love to travel and explore um, you know and then having my shoes on is kind of like being ready at a moment's notice you know they're very quick to act quick to uh, jump into something not to say that they can't be lazy um, they're very maybe selective of what they do participate in um, you know fire signs are all about the choices that they make but um, Sagittarius has that very on your feet kind of energy um, and I think if it was more concentrated it would probably beat Aries a lot more but Aries has that tenacity that cardinal energy that just always makes sure that it's first um, doesn't necessarily matter so much as to what they're doing, um, just that they kind of like, you know, get in front. Um, and yeah, so like talking fast, you know, lots of Sagittarius that I've met over the years, just like very, very quick talkers, lots of like almost nervous energy. Um, some of them come off a little more relaxed, a little more mellow. Um, cause we have different archetypes with Sagittarius. I think the further you go in the Zodiac, um, kind of the more diverse the array of archetypes you'll get for each sign is, um, or maybe it's a little more concentrated or predictable in the earlier signs. Sagittarius is, you know, the, the professor, which can make for someone that's very patient being in a teaching environment. Um, you know, but they're also pushing for change in their own way by changing minds of individuals, people that are going to graduate and move on into careers that can affect that change. And so they do have a heavy hand. Um, and they also give like often lectures and, um, talks on the side too. So it's not just restricted to the classroom environment. Um, you know, and stuff like that kind of really resonates with Sagittarius stuff. You think of a comedian and because um, Sagittarius is associated to comedy and laughter um, and it's something that is universally kind of like accessible like every culture everywhere in the world has some form of expression that you know attributes to laughter and I always say like laughter is a universal language you know it's like communication maybe that Gemini like an actual conversation is a lot harder for people, especially of different cultures, to jump into. But I can guarantee you there are many cultures out there that could watch the exact same Phil Army video and just laugh their asses off at the same parts. And so that's kind of what we like to think of when we think of Sagittarius reaching something more of a global nature. And this could also indicate that they like to volunteer, they like to give back. Certainly the mutable signs, I think more so than the other ones would be more involved in kind of like the forwarding of the planet's health and um, stuff of that nature. So let's see what we get here. We've had some really good surprises thus far. Um, nothing totally expected. Uh, we haven't seen any of the major arcana cards linked to the signs that we've read for so far and so I really like this series and that it's gonna you know it helps us all kind of broaden you know our, our aspects of an understanding of the cards and that you know not you can't just point to one or two cards and that be the only indication of a sign you know it's so fluid it's it's all interwoven so let's see Sag what have we got Maybe a little stubborn in this Pisces season, <laughs> feeling a little unstable. Um, ooh, okay. Yikes. So we'll take the first one, I guess. Um, no, I kind of want to draw that again. Give me a chance, guys. When I get a lot of cards that fall out, like, you know, 10 or more, I usually just kind of get back into this because. One, this series specifically, I really don't want to have more than three or four um, because I don't want to talk for an hour. I'm sure you guys will lose interest. Um, but it also, you know, it just kind of throws throws off the thing. Here we go. So, oh, okay. Knight of Swords in reverse. So bear with me. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I feel like very, um, not anxious, but kind of on fast forward mode so <laughs> I'm like uh, already feeling it and this is a very indicative card of that kind of personality um, so Sag here's your first card uh, Knight of Swords in reverse so 
If we look at it this way so you guys can kind of get a better look at it, this is the car that you want to see when you get, you want to get something done fast. You want something done fast, ask a Sagittarius. Um, you know, not that they're always on board with doing things that aren't going to affect them, you know, but if they do get behind something, you can expect this kind of momentum. You know, they just don't like to wait. It's kind of like you don't want to waste any of your time. You know, time is precious and they have big things on their agenda. They want to travel the world. They want to do stuff. So they don't want little things to get in their way. And so um, when it comes into conversations, um, you know, maybe difficult ones, they get like re really irritable. Um, they get very impatient and they're just not very confident as opposed like a of how to handle something of a more of a struggle um, like say like there's a conversation where there are people that are on the verge of arguing and you can kind of feel like some kind of uh, jabbing of some kind maybe that can make a Sagittarius very very anxious and uncomfortable um, which I'm sure a lot of people do experience but some people are a lot more calm and collected in those moments um, maybe a Sagittarius would just kind of like dart out of it and not even deal with it and so there's an indication here that maybe they run away from their problems or things that um, are going to take more time you know as opposed to something that is a really quick you know win or quick fix and so when stuff is reversed you know if we saw the knight of swords like this way it would say okay you know you come off a little strong but you do get stuff done um, when it's reverse, I would say you aren't as successful at getting things done and because you approach things with such a haste, you approach things with such a, a kind of a bold, um, insisting uh, manner and it can really like throw people off and so not everybody really responds to strong energy that well. Um, you know, I... I can definitely see that with the Sagittarius as I've had over the years. Um, but I personally love a Sag. They're very compatible for me. Um, so typically that's like one of my go-to signs for signs that I admire. Um, and, you know, kind of always kind of wish I was a little more easygoing with. But you see that there is a dichotomy with each zodiac sign in that um, – they're never fully one thing. You know, they have some attributes, but there's also some ironies in there too. And so maybe as calm and, and kind of go with the flow as some Sagittarius can come across, when it comes to action-oriented stuff, maybe that's when that impatience comes in and they really kind of get um, distracted. They're not as focused or maybe they just come across as like just too aggressive. And so their ideas don't really stick. And maybe that's why they have a tendency to just kind of move around from one place to another, never really settling, um, because they just don't feel like they have the endurance to kind of like, or to, you know, enough kind of stamina to lay a foundation um, to set them up for years going forward. And so, um, you know, it would be, I think it would better suit a Sagittarius to be in a profession like... Um, you know, school or university, because there is stability there. It isn't a, you know, an institution that, um, you know, doesn't really, it's not like a business that would really seem like it would ever stop running the same way, you know, but there, and then there's room for insights and intellectual engagement and stuff like that. And so, um, the stuff of the nature, like I would never think a Sagittarius would be a good postman um, just because, you know, there's not that kind of accuracy with them. They're a little more sporadic, um, you know, so it's like doing kind of a menial task would be like really frustrating for them, I could imagine. Um, and the Nine of Swords is like maybe somebody that talks over themselves is like, you know, kind of Gemini and Sag have that in combination. Like there's so many voices going at once. It's almost kind of hard to, to place where they stand in the conversation because they keep kind of tripping over themselves um, in the viewpoints that they have. And Sagittarius is um, just like, uh-huh, 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 you know, like just almost like making you kind of uncomfortable or whatever. But they, 
it's really them that just has that kind of impatience level that they they're not one to banter they're not one to just kind of sit and um, you know let things unfold they're more so the agitators and so this could come into play like um, you know not to say that they do a lot of damage but um, I could say that it, it could just be really disruptive to some environments if you feel like you are a Sagittarius and you have that effect on people or walking into a situation you feel like you almost kind of disrupt the energy like maybe you come across as too strong or too loud um, fire signs definitely can do that both of those things really very bold um, but there's also this miscommunication factor I would say this is like one of the cards to me that would kind of indicate mercury retrograde you know it's very much about people not getting the messages that are meant for them um, you know and just maybe misinterpreting it so it's like if you spend so much time trying to learn about all the other cultures around the world maybe you don't know yours as intimately and so there's a lot of like lost in translations because it's more about being a jack of all trades and being highly accessible to a diverse array of people as opposed to one specific or a few specific entities or cultures and so in that aspect I think we can see that you're not as um, uh, reliable or valued um, when you are kind of like spreading your emphasis on there's, there's just so much out there at play and I hope that resonates I hope that makes sense it just more so appeals like if you spend so much time trying to appeal to the masses um, I think there's a lot less room for what you have to say to actually resonate with people because you're not consistent you're not gonna be um, I think a lot of people respond to change in a very slow way and um, especially in this world and um, you know that you just don't have the like I said the endurance to just be consistent maybe like a Leo would be you know to be around and just to keep fighting the good fight you guys come off really strong and your guns are out at first um, but there is just this inconsistency this weaving tendency maybe you talk to a Sagittarius you make plans and then the next week all of a sudden they're you know in France and they totally forgot to tell you that they had trip plans at all and they're just like oh it happened really last minute I'm so sorry I didn't talk to you or um, things of that nature I, I see a lot with Sagittarius is that Jupiter fortune aspect um, kind of makes them miss out on things um, and usually they're okay it's not like a Pisces to where they get really emotional about it or they get more so the short stick like more misfortune like with the water signs we see a lot of the harder aspects of life that come into play in their lives a lot more with Sagittarius it's more of like um, you know the the fun experiences there's a lot of like FOMO energy with them so let's see what else we get um, with Sagittarius so Knight of Swords in reverse okay air signs interesting they get the suit opposite your own um, because Sagittarius is associated with the wands which is fire it's knowing the self um, and it's being able to influence and guide others um, you know with Sagittarius we see this almost guru archetype um, like a monk or something just kind of like maybe a little more accessible than a monk you know you have to go really far to find one of those um, but somebody in that aspect that is teaching but a, you know if you think about religion like that's a very accessible um, kind of institute of learning or thinking and so that's what you see with Sagittarius is nothing that's gonna be too esoteric you know it's nothing that's gonna be like there's only like 10 people in that group you know it's gonna be something on a bigger scale um, something that resonates with a wider audience and um, there's a, gonna be a lot of involvement a lot of like group activities and volunteering things like that um, but I think it'll be more so like if they were working for you know like a, a startup not a startup but like um, you know an 
social media company, they would go for like one of the big ones like Facebook or Instagram or something, you know, like Twitter um, or YouTube, obviously, um, as opposed to something that's just, you know, it's been around and just isn't as magnified or as successful. So um, not that they're necessarily seeking out that stuff, but I think there's a tendency to attract it. Um, the Hangman in reverse. So interesting because this card is already in reverse. So that's really funny. Um, you guys got both reverse. And so I think there's a, a really strong indication here that things don't really go the way that you plan for them, the way that you um, would like them to go. And we see that with the Jupiter aspects I was talking about. There's almost this nature of... Um, that inconsistency is almost like the universe responds to that and sees that you're not uh, very, you're not like strongly directioned, you know? And when you're so almost chaotic to some degree, you do miss a lot of opportunities and things do fall by the wayside. Um, you know, the meanings kind of get left behind. Um, things of that nature, you know, people just don't come to rely on you. There's a lot of, um, kind of FOMO, like you're missing out on stuff. I always, always see with my Sagittarius friends, um, like we'll be talking about doing like a fun event or something and then it gets closer and either they talk themselves out of it or they have like a lot of other things to be doing and they don't make it. And it hurts to me because I know that they really wanted to do that thing, um, especially if it's like they started the plan or whatever. Um, but there's that tendency to just kind of miss opportunities. And so there is this really interesting kind of perspective that they have. And that's what really we want to talk about with the hangman. The hangman is the, uh, the thinker, the the intellectual maybe that, um, you know, really sees things in a different light than most people. You know, we see a lot of Pisces with this card, um, that upside down, almost living in their own world. And maybe we can see that with Sagittarius too, is that they're kind of bumbling along in their own world. They're not really being um, brought down to earth as much. They, you know, when you think of the arrow just going really high and making its mark. And so, there's a lot of luck and opportunity with that. Um, so I think they're kind of blessed in that aspect of that a lot of good things do happen to them just because they almost need to. Like there's almost this need because they're not so in control of their lives or they're not so directionally oriented um, that there's almost a need for the universe to step in and to kind of like help them out. And maybe that's what we can see because with the fire signs, we see that they do need help, even though they seem like in control. But I think more so, it's not about the control. It's about being accessible and being bold. It's like saying the things that people do want to say, stepping up to the plate, being a leader and inspiring others. And so it's kind of like this karmic tie. It's like when you put yourself out there in a good way, you know, you, not that you can expect good things back to you, but I wouldn't expect bad things when you're doing the right thing. You know what I mean? And so the hangman here um, indicates that that unique perspective um, can sometimes get you guys unproductive. Um, you know, maybe if, say, we're going back to... Uh, like a comedian, I guess, is just one of those archetypes that I just really, like, just always think of when I think of a Sagittarius. It's like, maybe they st they stick too long on their on one subject. Um, they get kind of caught up on it. And so there's something about it they feel like they haven't quite fully understand or understood, or maybe the audience isn't reacting kind of the way that it was. Maybe it, like, pushed some buttons. And so there's, like, this weird... Um, need to kind of like explore more of that and that's what this is the hangman is really being hung up on a concept um, that can be very distracting and so it's like maybe you notice things that just aren't helpful and um, it can really trip you up and I think with the fire signs um, there's definitely that like we have a lot of ego at play and I think when we notice other people challenging us 
that does deter us from kind of our natural course. But I think for you guys, it's a little more of an intellectual um, type of distraction or um, decision making. And so that's not where you guys really feel you're very well suited for is like decision making because not only is the Knight of Swords that, but the Hangman is also having a kind of a, a clear uh, way of thinking or like um, being able to make your points, um, you know, known and, and received. And so um, there is this indication here, even though you guys might find yourself in an educational role, um, there are times where you do get tripped up and you do get kind of stuck. Um, and that can be very, very stressful for you guys because we know how independent you are and how you really don't like to spend time on a subject for too long. So there is this kind of martyr um, aspect to the hangman card where you start to defend something that is publicly unpopular. You know, it's not the view of the mainstream. And so maybe you feel like you're constantly battling a lot of... Um, uh, what's the, what's the word? It's like going against the status quo. You know, maybe you feel like there's a lot of social faux pas and you just don't agree with them and you're always trying to kind of like overcome them or just do them differently. Like there's almost a need to rebel here. Um, and maybe you think that it's positively influencing other people when you do that. But the indication here is that it's, it's really not helpful for anybody. Um, when you're kind of like going against the flow and just disrupting the nature of things just to disrupt, there's not really valid points that you're trying to make. Um, that's when things get a little dicey and that's maybe why there's always like this catch of like you missing out and stuff like that. Um, you know, I think these are like the hangman, especially is a higher concept card. It's a little more complex. And I see as we've moved through Aries to Scorpio and now with you guys, um, the readings are getting a little more in depth. And so they're getting, they're not as obvious at first to really kind of decipher um, because we're thinking of the sign as a whole. And so there's a lot of stuff at play there. Not any two Sagittarius signs are going to look the same. And so how does this appeal to all of you guys, you know? Um, so it's really about knowing things that other people don't or uh, being able to see things that just aren't the popular opinion. Um, we see with comedians, they are really good at turning kind of stereotypes on their heads and social faux pas and just putting that all into a language that Maybe it can seem offensive, but people aren't really offended by it because it's in the cadence of a joke. So you find ways to communicate things that maybe are harsh and maybe are, um, you know, just very unnerving or, un, you know, like rattling for people. Um, but there, you have like this kind of saving grace kind of factor to you in that the context or like how you deliver it um, allows you to kind of navigate that that rock you know that rocky water or whatever the term is the rough waters um so i don't know with the hangman uh, you know it's like maybe if anyone ever tries to control you or talk sense into you you have a tendency to just to not even hear it to just block it out maybe that's the one time where you guys get really firm and really rigid and really um, just kind of stuck is when someone's trying to convince you of something um, and they may even be right. Um, there's a, you know, kind of an indication with this card in that you're just not wanting to hear the correct version or what's really happening. And so there's a level of um, ignorance to the card, you know, just because you are smart or something doesn't mean that everything that comes out of your brain is right. Um, it doesn't mean that just because you see things differently doesn't mean that that's always helpful. Um, there are situations where it's really not. And so you guys need to be aware of that and just becoming a little more patient um, for others to make their points across, you know, because this Knight of Swords in reverse is kind of somebody that 
is climbing onto other people's opinions and kind of insisting and just attacking people whenever they make a counterpoint. Um, and so you guys really get hung up on stuff of that nature. Um, we're not really seeing a lot of fire with this reading. We're seeing a lot of more of the intellect, and this is more about the air signs um, and just a unique way of looking at the world, which is great, but there's always a time and place for that. And so it's about knowing uh, when to make your case. And so there's a lot to be learned here. Obviously, we see there's the most growth, I think, with the fire signs. Um, and that's why they love it so much. That's why they feel inspired by it. But yeah, just just be maybe a little more present in your conversations and, and patient would be nice um, and see kind of where that gets you. Maybe you see things that you didn't before. Maybe you're assuming that you already know as much as you do from the other people that you interact with and that they don't really have anything else to contribute. Um, you know, maybe you'd be surprised and um, maybe like just don't assume that you have the better perspective or the advantage in the conversation every time um, and just kind of let conversation take its toll or whatever, you know. The thing about being a teacher, being about somebody that's a leader is that you can't really control the results. You can't really control the way other people perceive you or perceive what you're putting out there. And that's just part of it. Everybody has their unique, unique way of thinking and processing and responding. And uh, no two individuals are alike. And so it's important to be more accepting um, that every person is an individual and that, you know, it's, it's really hard to kind of... Uh, appeal to everyone at once too, you know, and to really like use your counterpoints or something, um, you know, not as frequently, um, to just kind of like let things happen as much. I mean, you guys look really good and really calm when you want to be, I feel like when you're, you know, maybe you've got a joint or, you know, you've, you've just kind of are in that mood for the day where you're just really chill and, um, maybe bringing that to conversations a little more would kind of help, you know, people not feel so on edge or so kind of um, triggered by you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, let me know what you guys think. Um, those are some interesting cards to get. Uh, I, I can see that in the Sagittarius's that I know. Um, I think it's a little deeper of a read than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be kind of a little more of a lighthearted, you know, fire nature, a little more playful. Um, and I think these are a little more serious. Um, so it's interesting to see what we get here. You know, there's some expected cards like we see temperance is major arcana for you. Even the wheel of fortune is one I see a lot with Sagittarius energy and the king and queen of fire um, or any of the wand suits, you know, king and queen of wands would, you know, we would normally expect in a reading too. So it's natural for you guys to draw any of those. In most of your readings, you'll probably notice that, but these are some two, these are two cool ones to kind of keep track of from now on and see how often they kind of appear for you guys. And if they resonated with you talking about all of this, um, yeah. Anyways, if you guys want a more personal, individualized reading, hit me up at tarotwithtyler.com. I offer not only tarot readings, um, but astrology readings as well. So we can kind of check into the movement of the planets and see how it's personally affecting you based on your birth info. Um, so we've got some great rates going, and yeah, just check that out. Um, and I'll see you guys in the rest of the video.